Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's First Chapter Friday. This week we are reading The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabowski. Part 1 August 25th, 1991 Dear friend, I am writing to you because you said you would listen and understand and didn't try to sleep with that person at the party even though you could have. Please don't try to figure out who she is because then you might figure out who I am. And I really don't want you to do that. I will call people by different names or generic names because I don't want you to find me. I didn't enclose a return address for the same reason. I mean nothing bad by this. Honest. I just need people to know that someone out there listens and understands and doesn't try to sleep with people even if they could have. I need to know that these people exist. I think you, of all people, would understand that because I think you, of all people, are alive and appreciate what that means. At least, I hope you do, because other people look to you for strength and friendship, and it's that simple. At least, that's what I've heard. So this is my life, and I want you to know that I am both happy and sad, and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be. I try to think of my family as a reason for me being this way, especially after my friend Michael stopped going to school one day last spring and we heard Mr. Vaughn's voice on the loudspeaker. Boys and girls, I regret to inform you that one of our students has passed on. We will hold a memorial service for Michael Dobson during assembly this Friday. I don't know how news travels around school and how it is very often right. Maybe it was in the lunchroom. It's hard to remember. But Dave, with the awkward glasses, told us that Michael killed himself. His mom played bridge with one of Michael's neighbors, and they heard a gunshot. I don't really remember much of what happened after that, except that my older brother came to Mr. Vaughn's office in, the middle, in my middle school and told me to stop crying. Then he put his arm around my shoulder and told me to get, out of, get it out of my system before Dad came home. We then went to eat french fries at McDonald's, and he taught me how to play pinball. He even made a joke that because of me, he got to skip an afternoon of school and asked me if I wanted to help him work on his Camaro. I guess I was pretty messy because he never let me work on his Camaro before. At the guidance counselor sessions, they asked the few of us who actually liked Michael to say a few words. I think they were afraid that some of us would try to kill ourselves or something because they looked very tense and one of them kept touching his beard. Bridget, who was crazy, said that sometimes she thought about suicide when commercials came on during TV. She was sincere, and this puzzled the guidance counselors. Carl, who was nice to everyone, said that he felt sad, but could never kill himself because it was a sin. This one guidance counselor went through the whole group and finally came to me. What do you think, Charlie? What was so strange about this was the fact that I had never met this man because he was a specialist, and he knew my name even though I wasn't wearing a name tag like they do in an open house. Well, I think that Michael was a nice guy and I don't understand why he did it. As much as I feel sad, I think it's not knowing what is really bothering me. I just reread that and it doesn't sound like how I talk, especially in that office because I was crying still. I never did stop crying. The counselor said that he suspected that Michael had, quote, problems at home, but, and didn't feel like he had anyone to talk to. That's maybe why he felt all alone and killed himself. Then I started screaming at the guidance counselor that Michael could have talked to me, and I started crying even harder. He tried to calm me down by saying that he meant an adult like a teacher or a guidance counselor, but it didn't work, and eventually my brother came by the middle school in his Camaro to pick me up. For the rest of the school year, the teachers treated me different and gave me better grades even though I didn't get any smarter. To tell you the truth, I think I made them all nervous. Michael's funeral was strange because his father didn't cry, and three months later, he left Michael's mom. At least according to Dave at lunchtime. I think about it sometimes. I wonder what went on in Michael's house around dinner and TV shows. Michael never left a note, or at least his parents didn't let anyone see it. Maybe it was problems at home. I wish I knew. It might make me miss him more clearly. It might have made sad sense. One thing I do know is that it makes me wonder if I have problems at home. But it seems to me like a lot of other people have it a lot worse. 
Like when my sister's first boyfriend started going around with another girl, my sister cried for the whole weekend. My dad said there are other people who have it a lot worse. And my mom was quiet, and that was that. A month later, my sister met another boy and started playing happy records again. And my dad kept working, and my mom kept sweeping, and my brother kept fixing his Camaro. That is, until he left for college at the beginning of the summer. He's playing football for Penn State, but he needed the summer to get his grades right to play football. I don't think that there is a favorite kid in our family. There are three of us, and I am the youngest. My brother is the oldest. He is a very good football player and likes his car. My sister is very pretty and mean to boys, and she is in the middle. I get straight A's now like my sister, and that's why they leave me alone. My mom cries a lot during TV programs. My dad works a lot and is an honest man. My Aunt Helen used to say that my dad was going to be proud to have a midlife crisis. It took me until now to understand what she meant by that, because he turned 40 and nothing has changed. My Aunt Helen was my favorite person in the whole world. She was my mom's sister. She got straight A's when she was a teenager and used to give me books to read. My father said that the books were a little too old for me, but I liked them, so he just shrugged and let me read. My Aunt Helen lived with the family for the last few years of her life because nothing very bad happened to her. Nobody would tell me what happened, even though I always wanted to know. When I was around seven, I stopped asking because I kept asking the little kids always do, and, I, and my Aunt Helen started crying very hard. That's when my dad slapped me, saying, You're hurting your Aunt Helen's feelings. And I didn't want to do that, so I stopped. My Aunt Helen told my father not to hit me in front of her ever again. And my father said that this was his house and he would do what he wanted, and my mom was quiet, and so were my brother and sister. I don't remember much more than that because I started crying really hard, and after a while, my dad had my mom take me to my room. It wasn't until much later that my mom had a few glasses of white wine and told me what happened to her sister. Some people really do have it a lot worse than I do. They really do. I probably should go to sleep now. It's very late. I don't know why I wrote all this down for you to read. The reason I wrote this letter is because I start high school tomorrow, and I'm really afraid of going. Love always, Charlie.